Next Curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. I'm Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and today I have the Honorable Fung King Yu joining me today to talk about the state of Open RAN. Is it the new POC purgatory or is it the next disruption? I probably shouldn't have giggled when I said that, but uh, in all seriousness, uh, thank you so much for joining me, Fung, today. Um, never a dull moment in the world of telecoms, right? Right. Thank, thanks very much, Leonard. And I, I simply love the sobriquet. On, honorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're a very honorable man. I know this. I've known you for quite some time. And it's, uh, like I said, as always, great to have you on. And uh, so I, I wanted to start off our conversation here, really, before you introduce yourself with a, kind of like a header statement uh, for this session. So, you know, over the past two years, the hype cycle for uh, Open RAN has been firing pretty much on all cylinders, um, uh, you know, with the first open cloud native network uh, to go live with Rakuten and then, you know, the, these global geopolitics that have uh, basically, uh, for the most part, gone south, especially uh, between the U.S. and China. And, you know, despite all of the excitement, you know, I think progress has been a little bit challenging on the commercial front. You know, Brownfield Mindshare is a big question mark and the president's within these brownfield environments where networks is yet to be realized and you know we're seeing early stage uh, greenfield deployments uh, of rope and ran uh, networks right most notably dish and uh, one and one um, so you know we're, we're going to have a, a discussion about that and before we dive into um, our agenda Fung, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself to our audience and let them know about your background and the the work that you do the consulting and advisory or the research and advisory work that you do right um thanks very much leonard um I, i'm based out of singapore and for over 20 years I, i've been advising uh, technology companies uh, communication service providers in in particular on their market strategies, disruptive trends, and uh, innovation, and how to to ride the wave of, of new market developments and technologies, particularly the disruptive ones as, as they come on board uh, in, into the marketplace. So clearly, um, you know, Open RAN is right uh, <laughs> front and center uh, with, with this respect. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, thanks for that. And I, I might add that, uh, you know, Fung, you and I were colleagues at Gartner quite a while back, and we had a little bit of chat about uh, our time there uh, and um, our opportunity, the opportunities that we had to hang out in Asia. Um, always enjoyed that. But uh, so let's let's do this. Uh, what we'll be talking about in the next uh, few minutes here is um a four-part agenda that we have. So first off, what we're going to talk about or discuss is what is the latest in the uh, world of Open RAN. So we're going to share uh, some of the headlines that we think uh, are headline worthy. And then we'll dive into what is the state of the Open RAN nation. And then uh, we'll discuss what is the ground truth that the movement is facing, you know, and obviously I'm going to want to get your take on where you think uh, things are in terms of progress with the open RAN globally. And then we'll cap everything off with what we uh, what we expect uh, in open RAN uh, adoption and progress for next year. Right. How's that sound? Thanks, Leonard. Um, to, to really kick it off, uh, I should maybe say off the bat that, you know, in the case of open RAN, it, it is still very early days. It is a case yeah. of the insurgents fighting against the, the establishment, right? Yeah. Just, just to uh, jazz it up uh, a bit in terms of a uh, description. Um, I am optimistic about this technology. We, we actually seeing um, strong momentum uh, from the mobile operators, particularly Rakuten in Japan and also right. Entity Docomo right. with their work with um, you know NEC and um, Nokia and 
on the European front, we see the, the, the mobile operator majors, right? With, with the exception of BT, they have come up strongly uh, in, in support of, of this technology. So I am optimistic that the momentum will carry forward into 2022 and, and beyond. Okay, right. well, um, so let me ask you this. Now, uh, what are some of the, these headlines or the things that you've seen developed over the last uh, you know, three months or so that really stand out to you? I think the discussion around the RAN Intelligent Controller or, or RIC, right. I, I think mm -hmm. that that's very noteworthy. Yeah. And you know, in, in the coming years, I, I see more you know development and, and progress, and how this technology plays in terms of the technical performance of Open RAN, and also from a sustainability standpoint as well, uh, in terms of power consumption, mm -hmm. etc. How how that plays a role, you know, uh, for for the green agenda. So. Look, I look forward to you know developments in this space moving forward. It's going to be really uh, exciting times. Okay, are, are there any other things in terms of deals that you think are interesting or announcements? Um, right now, Leonard, to, to, to be frank, I think we are seeing better clarity in terms of where you know Open RAN fits in nicely in in, in the near term. Mm -hmm. uh, Open RAN is appealing to greenfield operators, particularly those that do not have 3G right. or 4G legacy uh, you know, systems, primarily because of the fact that ma many of the Open RAN vendors do not support this legacy um, cellular technology. So this is where the focus will, will be in, in the near term. Now, now, moving forward, I believe things will change. Mm -hmm. more more vendors will come in and provide the support for these legacy technologies yeah if if the mobile operators truly uh, demand for it we are going to see more integration more testing work more more tests on interoperability mm -hmm. um, standardization and i believe taken together all these really boots well um, for for the technology Right. Yeah, I'm, I, not, uh, I'm not saying that you know everything is rosy. Clearly, there there are you know still challenges around uh, today from from a technology performance perspective, mm. right? Uh, we have read about how power hungry some of the uh, the chips being used in Open RAN are, but hey, there there are emerging technologies in the pipeline, you know, particularly approaches like hardware acceleration, right? Um, yeah. Look aside or inline in techniques. And this is you know, another, another very interesting front to really keep tabs on and, and to see where, where that leads moving forward. And I'm optimistic that a lot of the challenges that are confronting Open RAN today will eventually be, be solved. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, and and so I, I think there definitely will be progress. Uh, some of the things that really popped for me over the last three months is obviously, you know, on the brighter side of things, you know, Rakuten's one and uh, one um, agreement and there's a partnership agreement. Um, and for our audience, if you don't know who one and one is, they're a German MVNO. Uh, this deal was kind of like minted uh, August of this year. And, uh, you know, the whole objective or at least what the partnership is going to do is establish uh, what should be the uh, and hopefully will be the first, um, you know, commercial uh, open RAN network in um, Europe. The other thing that I thought this is probably like the biggest, uh, you know, headline for me. Uh, and I don't know if it really got a lot of attention, but it was this announcement by Ericsson uh, of their, um, you know, intelligent automation platform, which is a service management and, you know, orchestration uh, platform, which is based on ORAN, um, ORAN's, like what you mentioned, the the RAN intelligent controller, but in particular, the non-real-time variety. 
And the really interesting thing about this is that they're, they've de designed this, this platform in a way where it can orchestrate and manage both open and Ericsson's purpose-built RANs, as well as any other third-party um, you know, um, RANs or automations that are, uh, that are either designed by the customer or a, a vendor that uh, you know, complies with, let's say, open RAN um, interface uh, specifications. So uh, I think this is pretty important because, you know, as you mentioned earlier, uh, this whole open RAN movement has uh, somehow become really a let's go after the big three type of movement where we've seen Ericsson and Nokia actually kind of embrace or try to figure out, okay, how do we play nicely with uh, the open RAN um, community as well as movement? Now, you know, there's some participants or members of the community that are wary about that. But the bottom line is, I mean, I think Ericsson's come up with a pretty, um, a pretty impressive play that that caters to what I think is is a top of mind agenda item for CTOs, which is look, we we're faced with this uh, need to modernize our our networks to five G. We need to figure out what to do with the old stuff, and all the stuff needs to be integrated, you know. And so um, that was the thing that really popped for me um, in the past three months. So I don't know. Yeah, I mean. You know, pre precisely. I mean, uh, you know, we one with the with the, uh, the network in Germany that that's really a green feel <clears throat> yeah. opportunity as well, and also with Dish in in the, uh, the yeah. United States. Yeah. Um, what really stand out as well? I thought you know, uh, putting out the hypothetical um, scenario, take, uh, falling on from Amazon's um, latest. Re uh, press release that they are launching an Amazon, uh, you know, private 5G. Right. Now, this is, this is very interesting to me because um, Amazon would need rent, rent equipment, right? right. And who, who do they want to partner with, right? Do they, do they just solely want yeah. to go with the established um, equipment providers or do they also want to take a, a leap of faith and, you know, go with the open RAN, um vendors now this is interesting because the the area that they are targeting which is the enterprise private networks you you can yeah. argue that these are relatively green greenfield uh, you know the deployments right with, with yeah. no legacy uh, uh, technologies and, and no emotional baggage uh, attached so yeah. you know it may be interesting, you know, for, for open RAN technologies as well. And here's where, you know, right. yeah. the, the scenario planning comes in, into play, right? What, what are the options that, uh, you know, Amazon has and what, what type of scenarios make me unfold in, in, in the near future? I think the possibilities are there and it's, it's something to really, uh, for, for the strategists and the market planners to, to really take note of Right. Today, the Amazon service is only for the United States and is right. available on the CBRS spectrum. Right. But tomorrow, there may be new possibilities in emerging as well, particularly given the fact that many countries outside the United States have also allocated spectrum for private enterprises to deploy mm -hmm. their private networks. Right. So it, it opens up new vistas for mm. the, the technology. Yeah, and, and um, it'll be interesting to see um, how that all unfolds. I mean, uh, I, I, I think the folks at AWS will admit that uh, it's early days for their own private 5G offering. Uh, it's something, I mean, it, it's something that they're hoping to do a bit of discovery uh, um, on with their customers as they go in and, and dabble. I mean, quite honestly, dabble with um, the the um, uh, this what what is pretty much a net new uh, wireless technology for most uh, you know enterprise organizations, right? So, and you know, there, oh, the other thing that I thought was really kind of uh, interesting 
on the hardware front, right? Because oftentimes with Open RAN, we talk about, <laughs> you know, we talk a lot about software disaggregation of X, Y, Z, but then we rarely talk about uh, hardware. But uh, when I was at uh, MWC uh, 2021, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, uh, Rakuten's announcement of SimWare. And what I thought I think is really interesting here is it's a collaboration, obviously, with one of their main silicon partners, which is uh, Intel, but also with uh, Juniper Networks. Now, in my conversations with Tariq, he, al he always emphasizes to me that it's all about the routing. So, you know, I'm really interested in seeing what kind of magic these guys conjure up but uh you know it's it's just an announcement the the hardware is probably going to be uh available uh for the rakuten mobile folks uh in uh, early next year or the first half of next year so we'll see what these uh these platforms look like but that i thought was another interesting thing because you know it it, it was uh it 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 represents an advancement on the hardware side. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's something that we oftentimes don't talk about, or at least even the community sometimes doesn't emphasize, is the importance of uh, the hardware making all of this stuff uh, a reality. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you're, you're spot on there, Leonard. I mean, yeah. you know, when, when we talk about open RAN, you know, we tend to talk about the uh, the, the vendors like Mavenir, you know, Parallel, Wireless, uh, you know, their impact on Ericsson, Huawei, uh, so on and so forth. But many people do not, you know, look, look at the, the hardware aspects. And also, I think in particular, the, the semiconductor chip aspects, right? And I, I yeah. would urge, uh, you know, the observers or those, you know, trying to predict the trajectory of Open RAN to also look at what, uh, the the cheap companies are doing particularly you know companies like Marvel, uh, yeah. Nvidia, Qualcomm, right. and see the the progress in in the cheap technologies because that's going to play a very key role yeah. in in terms of the technology or, or technical performance of right. uh, open brand you know as particularly as they try to you know to broaden beyond uh, you know the dominance of Intel in, in open RAN. So that that's another you know very, very interesting front to to really uh, you know keep track of. Yeah, yeah. And so you know earlier you mentioned that uh, open RAN's in its early days. So I want to go on to our next the uh, item here discussion item, which is what is the state of. Uh, the open RAN nation in your mind. So obviously early days, um, you know, what, what are some of your additional thoughts beyond what you've just mentioned in terms of the, the uh, semiconductor, uh, you know, collaborations and um, th some of the progress that is, has been made and what needs to be made going forward. So wh where, where where do you think we are right now with the state of the nation and and you know what in particular i think what we want to do is talk about the ecosystem and i'm not a big front, a fan of that term but <laughs> i'll throw it out anyways uh out of convenience i suppose but uh any any bullet items you want to share with our audience i think the ecosystem is already there right um it, it's just a matter of Broadening it, broadening it, perhaps right, uh, so that no no single company in in, in a specific uh, technology technology sector do dominates uh, you know that area. So such that you know it can really be termed as you know being, being truly uh, open, yeah. right? So moving forward, I, I think that you know the ecosystem which is here today, I believe it can only get richer, deeper, and, and, and broader. And in conjunction with the expected uh, interoperability testing, uh, and standardization, I, I think we are in a good position to, to move forward uh, on, on this front. Mm. Now, the big elephant in, in the room is really the geopolitical factors which yeah. can impact the the progress of, of the ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Open RAN, the ORAN Alliance, right? There, there are a lot of uh, you know Chinese companies in, in, inside, 
And given the US China ge- geopolitical tensions, you, yeah. you never know when one of these companies could be included i- into the into that list. Now, what was the name of that list? It it eludes me. At, the at entity moment. list. Ah, yeah, right. The the entity <laughs> list. So once you yeah. get yourself in, into that list, right, it, it's gonna create a, a lot of complications. Uh, yeah. For open brand tech technology, and that right. that's really the wild card in, in the room as as well, right? You you just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, it, it's and, geopolitics. Right, and um, you know, um, Nokia ran to a little bit of that drama, but you know, they pulled out just to make sure that uh, legally and uh, and otherwise that it was it was okay to continue to engage in the open because, like you said. Um, some of the founders are the the Chinese, uh, the big Chinese uh, uh, telecom operators. So I, I think one of the dilemmas that uh, the geopolitical uh, discourse it, it, it has is this understanding that a lot of global standard initiatives they are uh, global. Um, they transcend the geopolitics, and you know, just like 3GPP and the 5G standards globally, it, 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 the the benefits of what these global standard bodies and initiatives have achieved can definitely get undermined by um, uh, divisive geopolitics, um, or uh, yeah, they can be undermined. So. Uh, there, there's that risk, and I think a lot of the industries who uh, who depend on and have strived to establish these standards for a wide range of benefits that may not be appreciated by um, policymakers, it, 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 uh, those, those um, are things that the industry is very interested in preserving, right? Um, and again, I think there's an education process that needs to happen amongst policymakers who don't necessarily understand what OpenRAN is um, and what, let's say, open tech, uh, you know, t- technology standards like, sci- uh, you know, sci- uh, not sci-fi, uh, Risk Five and uh, uh, three, you know, Five G are. Right or all the three GPP uh, standards for uh, mobile wireless technology. So, um, and you know, even the industry sometimes struggle with these things. So, um, yeah, I totally agree with you there. I think you know, generally, one of the big uh, the I, I will agree with you. Early days. Um, one of the the dangers that I do see, though, because I've just seen it in you know in the IoT, is that it seems like we're the 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 movement is entering this uh, period of POC purgatory. So when we see a lot of the announcements, these are typically um, partnership deals, or you know, hey, we're we're gonna. Uh, do a joint effort with XYZ. We're opening up, a, you know, a test center. We're doing a pilot. Uh, we're doing a, a, some test trials in, uh, in in a certain, you know, segment of a, a maybe a brownfield network. Uh, but nothing, nothing big, right? Uh, other than some of the notables that we, we're very well aware of, and I think. That's one of the things that the community needs to be cognizant of because, I mean, if you look at IoT, um, there is this thing called POC hell or purgatory um, that can very well happen with uh, Open RAN as well, um, despite a lot of the, the efforts to uh, to promote it. So um, I think that's one of the, the things that I see uh, that seem to be happening and characterize the state of uh, open ran uh, as as I observe it today. So I would I would I would split right the mobile operators that are looking in, into open ran today in, into two groups, right? That 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 there is one group, and they are predominantly from the advanced uh, you know, developed markets, and, and these mobile operators have the resources, have the capabilities and, and the know-how 
to you know to understand and to, to implement um, open RAN, right? They they understand yeah. the complexities of the technology, the yeah. integration work, and it, it they do have some of these skills um, in house. So they, this are the mobile operators that would move ahead first, mm. faster than, than the rest. Now, the, the second group tends to be more associated with uh, you know, developing countries, particularly you know, like those yeah. in, in, in the region that I'm in, right? Asia or you know, Southeast Asia, for, for example, in the developing countries where they have less of the know-how, less of the resources, those would be like, you know, the fast followers um, or, or maybe even, you know, yeah. late adopters, right? Now, if, even in, in Soviet Asia, a, a lot of the mobile operators are interested in open RAN. Right. But they are taking a wait and see approach. Yeah, right. Let, let, let's see what the innovators uh, are, are doing first. You know, let, let's, right. let, let them commit all the mistakes. Yeah. And then we learn from them. We know where, uh, where to go, what not to do. And then, right. you know, we, we move forward when, when the time is right. So, and, and for now, we'll sit still, we'll learn, we'll observe. Right, that yeah. that's the second group of mobile operators that I'm seeing in, in the market. Mm -hmm. So, what what are some of the ground truths that you think that the movement is facing? Because I think you know you're we're kind of headed in that direction, right? We're talking about the state of the open ran nation. You're mentioning some of the 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 lenses that uh, some of the operators are applying to. Uh, the uh, the technology um, and their willingness to adopt, or their where their heads are at at the moment in terms of adoption or experimentation with Open RAN. But what what are some, what do you see as some of the things that the community is butting up against, that especially given all the the momentum, the hype momentum that built up like two three years ago. Um, and you know, I, I think you you'll probably agree with me. There there have been some sobering moments, uh, especially over the last um, few months, uh, that have kind of um, you know uh, tempered uh, things a bit. Well, it it comes with a territory of disruptive technology, right? That there's going to be ups and downs uh, along the way. You know, it, it's not a linear path where you right. go from point A to point B without any hiccups, right? It's, yeah. it's a given that, you know, it is a rough road. Um, but what, what I think is going to be critical moving forward for, for the technology is, you know, to pay attention to what the mobile operators re really want. Yeah. And what, what they really want, you know, really boils down to a few uh, simple things. Uh, the first one is, you know, the ease of deployment and managing the network. Yeah. Right? They, they don't want the complexity. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, having, you know, a, a lot of, you know, af after deployment, you know, they have to do this and, and do that and, you know, and, and things get more complex. They, they want everything to be simple, easy, easy to manage and it works as promised. Right? Yeah. I think, and the, the second thing they want is, you know, it's from the cost factor. Yeah. No one would disagree with me today, uh, you know, uh, when, when I say that mobile operators are under tremendous pressure from, from the business front, either from uh, the revenue or, or profit perspective. Yeah. And any one of technology that can contribute or alleviate the pressure from, from this front. Yeah. Now, unfortunately today, um, you know, I, I think the cost angle is going to be very difficult for open yeah. brand to achieve, right? Uh, yeah. Partly because of, you know, the, the lack of skill, you know, having to be deployed al alongside, um, you know, legacy infrastructure, so on and so forth. I, I think the cost element is going to come later ra rather than sooner, mm -hmm. right? And, and then the, the third factor is, you know, security. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
mobile operators need a, a secure network. You know, mm-hmm. given you know the the cybersecurity threats that have been proliferating uh, all over the world, mm-hmm. and, and the fourth factor, uh, which will become increasingly important, is the sustainability aspects, mm-hmm. right? The the power consumption front. You know, how, that, does it? How much does it contribute to the carbon footprint? Yeah, you know, um, am am I making the the climate change problem worse, or will you know open rent you know be you know one one of the solutions to to mitigate climate change? Right? Yeah, that's that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> attribution it, it is, is very very is difficult. Tough one. It is it is a very yeah. tough one. And that's yeah. that's where you know the, the power consumption, mm. uh, you know, having efficient you know hardware, it, it's it's going to be critical. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Um, it, it, it it's interesting that you brought up the whole uh, cost thing because um, I read an article in Light Reading, and uh, you know it was with um, it cited um, a statement by um, Neil McRae. He's the, the I think he's the chief architect of BT. He's always on mm-hmm. podcasts and stuff like that. And um, really cool guy, very, very knowledgeable gentleman, obviously very, very experienced. And he basically stated that um, the open RAN is not going to save him money, you know, um, and he bas- he rattled off a bunch of rationales, both technical and, uh, you know, operations wise and financial wise that uh, boiled that down. So, you know, obviously BT's been um, tinkering around with open RAND and they're, he's not seeing it and he doesn't see that as a primary um, value proposition especially today so that basically means technically um, the the community has a long way to go um, before um, we, we see we see any kind of solid uh, support for a assertion that um, open ran is cheaper and I think that's one of the big headwinds that um, the community is going to have to start to grapple with, uh, especially as they look forward uh, to figuring out, okay, now how how do we how do we uh, take our assumptions of what, like you said, is valuable to the operators, and then really tune into those pain points and priorities, um, because some I, you know the feeling that I get. And my observation is a lot of these assumptions that the community went forward with um, starting, I would say, three, four years ago have not panned out. Right. And so these are, these are the things that are like are being tested. And so you have the hype, then you have sort of the cooling of the hype. And those are some of the things that I see happening as uh, rea- these reality factors or the ground truth start to fact, you know, test the assumptions i would i would also add you know some some caveats to to the cost uh, you know discussion yeah. um, that we should not forget the role of context yeah. in in the cost equation right if you're an established operator say versus a greenfield operator now obviously yeah. the the cost equation is, is going to be yeah. different or even you know if your mobile traffic uh, profiles are, are different, right? The, the performance is also going to be different. That's also going to impact your network uh, yeah. design, right? And you know the nature of, of the geography as well. You know, um, is your network yeah. you know primarily serving the, the urban high density areas or more of a rural area? Right. Th- these are all uh, pertinent factors right. that's going to impinge on onto the cost equation, right? Yeah. So I, I would take what you know and anybody says about costs, you know, with uh, with caution, right? It all depends on right. the context one is in. Right. And that that's why I'm so interested to see how things play out for dish because mm-hmm. you know um I've actually brought this up several times in analyst uh sessions is US is not Japan. <laughs> 
Absolutely. <laughs> right? um, you know, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Los Angeles is not Tokyo or New York or and the rest of that country is nothing like the United States. So um, you're absolutely right. And um, there's a lot of other factors that uh, that price into the cost of a network. And, and so you're I think you're spot on. Um, and and so that's what makes things a little bit even even more complicated. So if you take these generic, um, let's say these archetypical value proposition to market now, how do they resonate? And so these are the things I think that as the open rack community tries to figure out how do they get a brownfield win? And that is important. You know, you can't keep doing greenfield or expecting greenfield, you know, opportunities to fall out of the sky. Bottom line is most of the networks are brownfield managed and operated by the largest telcos, the tier ones. Right. So what what's that gameplay? And so, yeah, I, um, I, I, I think you bring up a, a vital point. So that's really cool. So let me ask you this. Well, what can we expect uh, you know according to Feng King Yu, what can we expect uh in open ran adoption next year if you were to put your swami hat on what do you what do you think well, i <laughs> i <laughs> i believe the momentum it's strong enough uh -huh. in the market Right, and it's sustainable, right? Yeah. Despite all right. the you know the, the challenges, you know, there, there are enough large major mobile operators, you know, that, that are backing the technology. So I would say the chances are very high that you know we'll we'll see more more wins, uh, you know, mm -hmm. coming out uh, in, in the next year. And we will definitely see more progress on the technical front uh, as it pertains to you know, the technical performance, uh, you know, power management uh, issues. I think we will continue to see improvements on, on that front. And taken together as, as a whole, I, I think it bodes well for, for the open RAN uh, you know, technology. But you know, as I've said earlier, right, the big elephant in, in the room is really the geopolitical uh, factor, yeah. and that that is yeah. really, really very uh, you know un unpredictable. So let me to venture to guess, but an elephant is your favorite animal. <laughs> <laughs> you bring up elephants. There's a lot of elephants in your room, uh, in in your room as well as. In your oh, you, are you, are you, are you can describe maybe you know the, the bull in the china shop that's gonna break all yeah, the yeah, yeah. okay well there you go okay now i like the elephants better i like elephants <laughs> yeah uh, my whole take on it is is this and i'm gonna borrow from a netflix film here uh as i think next year is gonna be the beginning of it's gonna be that first phase in the squid game for the open rank community and i'll tell you why i say that um is because some of these players are gonna have to start teaming up right um they have to tame up get really good and they have to gear up and um you know build partnerships that will enable them to win you know and i and that's not to sit there and say that you know it's going to be a winner take all scenario but you know the fact of the matter is the big three are continue to innovate and you know I, there's this very weird you know i get these in the discussions i get in with the open rack community the sense that everyone thinks that these guys are not doing anything ericsson has their big oran based integration play they don't need to go open ran they have their cloud ran it's gonna it's gonna be fine for them uh yeah i'm sorry to say it but you know they have their game plan down and uh and nokia they're getting deep in the rand stuff with a lot of the other open rand uh players and uh and then you know uh huawei's still putting out in you know industry leading purpose built systems uh for you know heterogeneous network scenarios so Counting even counting Huawei out because they're not playing an open uh, RAN game is, uh, you know, I, I don't think is is a um, a smart thing from a competitive perspective. So I think the community is going to be pressed to start delivering on promises that were made, 
uh, and that's gonna uh, that's gonna force a little bit of Squid Game ish type of stuff happening next year, <laughs> which I think is a good thing. Uh, honestly, the question is is what is the gameplay? Because you have a lot, of, like you said, a much bigger ecosystem than we had three four years ago. A lot of participants, a lot of money coming in, a lot of expectations being set. Uh, G, uh, you know, not only uh, well, not only with the financial markets, but with uh, with governments. You got to deliver, right? You can't just sit there and say all this stuff and then not deliver. So it's Squid Game time next year. That's <laughs> that, that, that's a very interesting uh, you know, a- analogy. Uh, the, the, the important thing for, for the new open RAN vendors, right, is that they have to collaborate. They, they have to ensure that their equipment and their technology are compatible with one another, that the interoperability is there, right? And to this end, they they have to ensure that there are no fragmentations in the open RAN standards. We can't have forks along the, the, the path because once that happens, there will be fragmentation, there will be confusion, and it will only set back the open rent uh, in a momentum. Right. So right. I would say that this is one, one of the key cautions that, that I have for the, the open rent uh, industry. Well, yeah, it, but we also have to keep in mind that standards are different from the actual implementation of the standards. I mean, and the under, you know, the technical implementations that support the standards, right? So yeah, yeah. you don't have to, you don't have to bundle the two together. Uh, and so I think, uh, you know, I, I think many in the community will even admit that uh, open RAN standards and, you know, uh, conventions are still kind of like a, a work in progress. Now you have certain players that are, they're not waiting, they're pressing forward and kind of, uh, you know, uh, taking on a, a path, a pathfinding, uh, they have a pathfinding mission just to push things forward to make uh, Open RAN a, a thing. Um, now that doesn't mean that uh, there can't be some degree of harmonization that happens and alignment. Um, you know, the bottom line is you got to make something happen, yeah. and I, I would also, you can't I wait would for also... everyone to to uh, come one thousand percent or one hundred percent aligned with everything uh, before something happens. And I think that's why you know I'm bringing up this whole squid game thing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's too much at stake. You can't, you can't keep, you know, waiting for the standards uh, for everyone to uh, come and align with everything. Sorry. The, 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 fl- the flip, the flip side to this, right, is that, right? I, I hear what you're saying, right? Um, but for the for the sake of discussion, right, the, the flip side of having, uh, you know, too much fragmentation or, or, or someone going ahead, uh, well ahead of, of the rest is that fragmentation will happen. And with that, if it's uncontrolled, unmanaged, then we are going to see more integration efforts being needed. Right. right. And, and when that happens, mm. there will be more cost and, involved and that will go against... Um, you know the, the the principles that are highlighted earlier. You know that that the, the right. CSPs are, are looking very closely on the cost equations. So right. so in, in the long run, right? Uh, you know it's the, the, these are the negative implications. Yeah, but also keep in mind um, that it's this is about the carriers and not about the vendors. Um, somehow the vendors have made it about the vendors, but it's about the operators and the mm-hmm. operators have a determination can make a determination within their organizations about um uh, who they which vendors they deal with based on their compliance or alignment with open ran and that being based on how much of the open ran stuff they internally um adopt right because there there could be uh, you know organizations that go open ran light or hybrid and which is going to be 
um, or multi-technology as uh, uh, Ericsson calls it. So, and that might be the thing that, um, you know, uh, rules the day and, and determines um, how Open RAN is relevant and who gets to play in the brown field, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting now. Um, and I'm hopeful uh, just as you because I think uh, Open is sort of inevitable. Um, it'll have a presence in, in some degree. But I do think the squid game thing is going to happen. <laughs> 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 and, you know, you can keep everyone straight, Fung. You can keep everyone straight. And, uh, well, re re regardless, right, it's going to keep both of us very busy, right? <laughs> uh, which, yeah, which definitely. Is, which is a good thing, right? Yeah. Re regardless of which scenario pans out. <laughs> yes, that's that's the beauty of all of this. Uh, and and yeah, there isn't going to be a dull moment. It's really exciting stuff. So, hey, um, thanks for your time, uh, Fung. Good to have you again. Um, so why don't you take a moment to uh, tell our audience how they can reach out to you and find out more about your research and uh and you know maybe track you on social or what whatever other media that you like to be followed on well thank, thanks leonard and uh yeah i i post a lot of my thinking and uh you know my my my, my thoughts on on linkedin so uh, do do follow me there on, on social media and uh, I can my, my contact details are also there on LinkedIn as well. So I really do hope to hear from some of you. Thank you. Great. Yeah. And um, for those of you who have, uh, you know, attended this uh, session, thank you so much. And uh, Fung again, thank you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at www uh next-curve.com we have a research portal there and we also have a thought leaders section where fung is featured so fung you've joined us on several <laughs> podcasts you've also contributed pieces there's a, a single a one-stop shop for fung king you on the next curve website so go and check out his uh, thought leadership it's great stuff and uh until next time be safe Please st stay healthy and uh, have a wonderful day, evening, or afternoon. Thank you, and bye-bye. Uh, Visit us at www.next-curve.com.